We're in Portsmouth, Rhode Island, investigating a 350-year-old trial and execution tied to the testimony of a ghost. And Chip just shocked us. He killed her. I they either thought that she died of natural causes, or, or it, but her death it, it isn't obvious for how she actually was killed. He killed her. Interesting. Because they said that she had hit her head, possibly, and she fell into the fireplace and was burnt up. They rule it an, you know, an accident. A few days later, her brother, John Briggs, that's the J name, John. He was awoken in the middle of the night with the apparition of a woman in front of him, and she said, look how my body is burnt. So she didn't actually say, I was murdered right. or anything like that. I know you're, you, in your heart of hearts, you feel that he committed this, that Thomas did. But there is no substantial evidence that puts him in that position of murdering his own mother. There's the possibility it was an accident and he tried to cover it up. I don't know. <laughs> Accident. Well, we've gotten one EVP, and it was a very clear EVP that says accident. And we don't know if John had ulterior motives. There's the possibility, and I would have to ponder on it a bit more. You honed right in for the story that we are the most interested in. I'm blown away that whoever's sending this information through to me, they've been pretty freaking direct on this. Yeah, definitely. This is all about Rebecca mm -hmm. and Thomas. Okay. Okay. All about that. okay. All right. Thank you, Chip. What's really interesting about that, I know Chip was very convinced that Thomas did it, but Chip could be keying into any of these other people mm -hmm. who kept saying that he did it. We've got to reach out to Rebecca, and we've got to reach out to Thomas. So tonight, we are going to do an experiment and see if we can communicate with Rebecca and with Thomas. Amy is going to go out somewhere near where Thomas's grave is. I'm going to go inside next to the fireplace where Rebecca was found dead. You start out there questioning. Mm -hmm. I'm in here. And then you go out there with the headphones. Mm -hmm. And you question. And I question in there. Mm -hmm. OK. And we're hoping we get some sort of guttural reaction from these spirits to let us know that, yes, we hear you, we see you, and this is what we think about uh, what transpired. So Amy will ask questions. I will not know what she's saying. And hopefully somebody will come through in this space. So Rebecca was found here. If there's anybody in here with me, we, we have questions about Thomas and we have questions about Rebecca. Amy, I'm in position. Uh, just let me know when you're ready. All right, I am also in position. OK, I can't hear anything. I'm looking for Rebecca Cornell. Hi, you, female. Rebecca. Can you tell me what happened to you? The floor. You did wind up on the floor. Did Thomas do it? The devil. I'm broken. Why are you broken? What happened? He's stronger. Was it an accident? What if I, male voice, is this Thomas? Am I talking to I did. Oh, f <sighs> On the floor. OK. So you're saying that you murdered Rebecca? You took her life? I just, I want, we want to make sure we get this right, Thomas, because many people... I finished it. Thomas, just to be clear. Thomas. Chip was so adamant that he did it, and this guy sounds like he's guilty. Thomas, just to be clear, did you kill Rebecca? You did it. 
if you tell me you're innocent, we're going to make sure you're buried with your family. But you need to come clean. You need to tell us what happened. They all denied it. They all denied it. It was the right thing, building. Make money. You want, OK. Wait a minute. Chip warned us about a shapeshifter. This could be John Briggs pretending to be Thomas. This is John Briggs. John Briggs, are you here? You're the one who had the dream, right? John, are you I'm over it. It's a lot of bull. Oh, my god. OK, I think I'm talking to John Briggs. John, are you upset that we're getting close here? That we are going to exonerate Thomas. Stop talking. What if we exonerate Thomas and we bury him in the family plot? He's always there. So it seems like I'm talking to John Briggs right now. This guy suddenly, as soon as I brought up John Briggs, he got very angry. It's a male voice, Amy. It's been doing it for like two minutes. All the last two minutes, it's just been man, a man. He does not want us doing what we're doing. Get up. Rebecca, can you come through? Or Thomas, can you come through? I need to hear from one of you. Your turn. Yep, it's my turn. All right, can someone tap Adam and tell him we're going to switch? Adam. God. That's messed up. Usually, I wear a mask while doing this, like a blindfold, so I can't see anything. And there are times when I wanted to shut my eyes and like really dig into what was happening. But I felt like I needed to open my eyes so that I could make sure that I was safe, because what I was hearing was a male voice toward the end that was very aggressive and constantly commenting, almost as if, I mean, I felt the get up was from me personally, but I don't know, because I don't know what she was asking. So wait, are you going to tell me what happened, or are you going, or I should we switch I think I should up? tell you. So at first, I like assumed I was talking to Rebecca or Thomas, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the way you were talking was like, just very much seemed like, I was like, well, maybe Chip was right, and Thomas did this. But then it was just like kind of too easy. And I was, right. and I had this moment where I went, what if it's John Briggs? And I was like, is this John Briggs? And that's when you started getting so angry. Huh. And I was like, are you trying to stop us from telling the truth about what happened here? And you started getting mad. Something flipped and this male voice started talking. And I could feel his energy as if like, when you hear the words, you, you get a sense of what he's thinking and what his right. face is doing. And that's le legitimately, I felt him, whoever that was in the space.